Hello everybody, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin on Facebook Live, not live. So let me explain that a little bit. I am actually at the Packer game on Sunday when this is going to be broadcast and I asked everybody if they would like me to do another Facebook Live, not live, because I'm not actually live here and they said yes. So, I came up with a few projects to share with you, and I'm going to do that. Um, my cousins flew in from Arizona this weekend, and they wanted to go to the Cardinals-Packer game. And for those of you that are overseas, the Packers are our Wisconsin football team. It's a professional football team. And so, I am up in Green Bay at the game, and I am decked out with my Green Bay Packer shirt, and I even have Green Bay Packer earrings. <laughs> so I am, I'm hoping, having a blast. I am pre-recording this early, so I haven't actually gone to the game yet, but just wanted to kind of let you know what's happening there. I have spent the week um, working really hard and catching up on stuff. I think you guys know that I have been gone almost every weekend since September, or had some type of stamping event on those weekends that I was here in Menasha. And um, that that sends my life into a little bit of chaos. So I've, I've got it a little behind on things, just things in general. And um, I feel like I've gotten myself caught up. It was so funny today because I have family coming into town. We're kind of doing a little family reunion. My cousins rented one of the party houses by Lambeau Field in Green Bay. So um, my mom's side of the family is all coming over to this side of the state to um, get together for a little reunion and go to the game. But um, it's kind of funny because I'm like, okay, I need to get all my stamping stuff done and then I'm going to clean the house. And I told my husband this, then I'm going to clean the house. And he goes, oh, really? I might have to take a picture of that. And I kind of gave him kind of a funny little laugh because I was kind of like, Ur. and um, he said, he said, what, what? And I said, well, I shouldn't have to clean the house. Like, that's your job now. He has had the wonderful life, and I'm sure you guys all know, you know, you live this too, of he never cleaned this house. Like, he didn't clean this house in 20 some years. I took care of the kids, I did all the cooking, I did all the house cleaning, I did all the running, I did all the grocery shopping, and um, so when he retired last year, it's like, dude, I'm working, this is yours now. So I know a lot of you do all of this stuff, even if, you're, if your spouses are retired, but um, I'm just not willing to do that, like, that's that's a that's a game changer for me. He doesn't have anything to do. He can clean the house. He does do all the cooking now. You guys know I'm very spoiled that way. Um, he does all the cooking, but he needs to learn how to clean, and he's not a very good cleaner. And other than today, he's an angry cleaner. Like when he has to vacuum, he's rrr, rrr, rrr with the vacuum cleaner, and he's just like angry. <laughs> I was really surprised today while he was vacuuming. He was not angry and he didn't get all huffy with me after I told him I shouldn't have to clean the house. That's your job now. So anyways, um, I just wanted to share with that with you because it was kind of funny. So he was actually, he's feeling better. He started feeling better yesterday. I don't know if I told you guys this last week, but um, ever since um, the weekend before Thanksgiving, he came back from my mom's house. We were up there hunting. He came back from my mom's house and he was just, has just been miserable ever since. And, um, we don't know really what's going on with him, but kind of all of his symptoms, symptoms are pointing to rheumatoid arthritis. Is that the pr right pronunciation? I don't know. I'm really bad at medical things. That is totally not my thing, but, um, he's got an appointment with a rheumatologist coming up. Um, like December 14th or something like that to try and get to the bottom of everything hurts. Like he's been laying in the living room doing nothing since November, whatever, 20, 
fifth or something like that. So um, he started feeling better, so I was happy to see that because he did vacuum today and um, put away a bunch of stuff, and the house is actually looking pretty decent. It's my deal that the house must be cleaned if we're having company, and my aunt and uncle are coming to stay overnight Saturday night for the Sunday game. So um, my house needs to be clean, and I've got a lot of work to do too because my I have a dressing room. It's kind of funny. It's just a bedroom that nobody lives in anymore, and I call it my dressing room because that's where I keep my clothes, and that's where when I get out of the shower, I come in and sit down at my little desk, and I do my makeup and my hair and all that stuff. So it's my dressing room, and that sounds fancy, doesn't it? But um, I've got clothes everywhere, so I really need to get that cleaned up because my aunt and uncle are going to be sleeping in there. So anyhow... Um, I'm starting to get caught up. Steve is feeling better. My mom is coming to visit tomorrow, and which will be Saturday, mind you. My mom came, I should be saying, my mom came to visit yesterday. But um, we are going wedding dress shopping with Haley. So that's gonna be super exciting. I can't wait to tell you guys all about it. Um, on the next weekend, which will be December 9th, um, I will be back live on Facebook. So, anyways, just wanted to let you know what's going on there. Um, please make sure that you go back to Facebook and share my video for me. I really appreciate that. That helps me out more than you can know. And you can also share it on YouTube. Just click on that share button. Give me a thumbs up. That's wonderful. Um, hit that like button on Facebook. That's helpful for me, too. I just want you to know that um, we have new mini catalogs coming out in December. So this is the Occasions mini catalog and the Celebration brochure. Um, Occasions mini catalog is going to be active from January 3rd to June 3rd. So super excited. I wish I could show you the inside, but it's against the rules. We can show you the cover and that's about it. Um, and then celebration, for anybody that's new and doesn't know what celebration is, it's the most wonderful time of the year. So for every $50 you spend either in our annual catalog or this new Occasions mini catalog, you get to choose a free product out of this brochure. We do have, I think, one or two level two items, we call them, because with a $100 order, you can get these bigger items for free. And I'm super excited about this. I'm going to be starting soon to be making stuff with these products because I'm in a whole bunch of swaps, as usual. So I've got to start designing with those soon. So you'll be seeing some sneak peeks coming up. So watch for that. That's exciting. And um, if you'd like to get your hands on any of these products, you can do that as early as December 5th. And all you need to do is join my team as a discount stamper. No, a discount shopper. We're not discount stampers. Don't even think that. As a discount shopper, um, you can join my team. The kit is $99. You get to choose anything you want, and you can choose these products to put in your kit to, um, you get to choose $125 worth of stuff for $99. There's no shipping on that. If you'd like to get your hands on these products early, join my team as a discount stamper. If you have any questions about that, pop me an email at kelly at a stamp and um, I will be happy to answer any questions. I also have a link on the right side of my blog in the right hand column is um, a little box that says $99 kit. If you click on that, it'll take you all to, to all kinds of details and and questions and answers too. So just wanted to let you know that you do have the option to get those um, products for free. And if you have a wish list that's around $100, this discount shopper deal is a no-brainer. You definitely need to be ordering that because you get a 20% discount off your, all your future orders um, for as long as you are active as a discount shopper. You get a quarterly magazine from Stampin' Up! that has beautiful samples and techniques and tips and all kinds of great stuff in it. You get access to my team Facebook page and I also have a blog for my team. So those are two fantastic resources available to you. Um, there's just so many things that come with being a discount shopper. And you can also be a business builder. If you want to make a business out of this, I'm your girl. 
I can, I can tell you how to do that. I can help you do that. Um, I'm not going to do it for you, but I can give you the resources so you can do that. I'm not going to mamby pamby that. Um, you know, people kind of think things are going to drop into their lap and that usually isn't the way that it works. So I am not going to sugarcoat things with building a business. Um, anytime you build a business, it's, it's, it's a chore, right? Um, but it's fun. This is the funnest job I have ever had in my life. So um, join me. It's a lot of fun. Don't forget... Um, Use the host code when you're placing orders. I'll show you that in just a minute. I have a brand new host code for the month of December. If you're ever looking for that host code when you're ready to place an order, it's in the right-hand column on my blog, www.stampabove.com. It's always right there, so it's easy to access. Um, oh, speaking of host code, I do a drawing. And this, this month, for the month of November, I'm just drawing with my host host code. I do this once a month. I have three winners to announce. I have um, Stephanie Gibson of Pasco, Washington, Sheila Crutchfield of Colleen, Texas, and Carol Smet of Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. You each win a stamp set of your choice valued at $20 or less. So if you're watching Please pop me an email with the item code and the name of the stamp set that you would like, and I will get those ordered right away. Congratulations. So that's one of the benefits of using that host code when your order's under $150. If it's over $150, don't use the code. You still get entered in the drawing for this, um, but you'll get your own rewards from stamping up when your order is over $150. So I want you to take advantage of that. Don't forget I have orders going in every Thursday, and I also, this is the time of year people are contacting me for gift cards. Um, I have gift certificates available in any denomination. I can send them any place in the United States. All you have to do is um, either send me a check or I can bill you through PayPal, and you can just use your credit card to um, pay for a gift certificate. And you can give a gift certificate to your loved ones that are stampers or give my email address to your friends and family and say, I want a gift certificate from Kelly. And that works perfect too. Okay, let's see. We have, um, don't forget that commenting under my YouTube, uh, or I'm sorry, commenting under YouTube or under Facebook will get you an entry into a drawing to win prizes. Also, sharing my video on YouTube and Facebook gets you entered into a drawing, and placing orders with me gets you entered into a drawing. And as long as we're talking about that, I might as well tell you who the winners were this month, or this week, from last week. Um, let's see, I have, for the comments, Mary Emilio of Worth, Illinois, you are the winner of this Swirls and Curls embossing folder. These are actually, I believe these are on back order right now, so you're a lucky recipient of this because I happen to have one. Also, um, we have for sharing my video last week is Jane Grunwald, and let me open these up and show you what they are. These are our candle embellishments, and they are just stinking adorable. So they're self-adhesive, and I just dumped them all over my desk. <laughs> self-adhesive little metal candles. It's kind of hard because I've got my mirroring on. Mirroring is working this week, you guys. Last week, remember, it wouldn't work for me. Um, we've got silver and gold candle embellishments. They're just adorable. That's what Jane Grunwald is going to win. And Jane is, I believe, from the New London area. Jane, if you're watching, I do not have your address. You're going to need to contact me. You can email me or private message me on Facebook and give me your address so I can mail out your prize. Thank you for sharing my video. Then I have Susan Schmick. Susan is from Crossville, Tennessee, and Susan is going to win the Santa's Workshop Memories and More card pack. And you guys know these are the bomb. Love, love, love them. And um, Connie Billerman of Raleigh, North Carolina, you are the winner of the Merry Christmas to All. Now, Susan and 
Connie are winning these prizes for placing orders. And um, I did do an extra drawing this week. I usually give three things away every week, but I actually did four because I need to thank you guys for all your orders. Um, my November was spectacular, and I really, really appreciate it. And so when things go really well for me, they go well for you too. <laughs> More prizes, yay! So I will be getting these out in the mail on Monday. I just want to let you know that. Let me put those over so I don't lose them. And let's see, what else do I have? Um, I think we are ready to, uh, oh, I know, I need to show you some of the things that I made this week just in case you missed it. We had a new paper pumpkin. Um, I think it was called To You and Yours was the November paper pumpkin. And here is the beautiful card that I made. This is an alternate idea using the kit. So I just added the um, gold foil deer on there. Everything else came with the kit and a piece of cardstock for the card base. So that was really cool. Inside, stamped up. This was a beautiful stamp set and um, card kit. And check out that plaid envelope. They came like this. I love paper pumpkin. And then here's the other card that I made. Paper pumpkin kit. And this one, I just added these little flowers and this little flourish from Dashing Deer, which is the same place that the deer came from. So that's where I got this stuff. And I used the woodland folder in the background. Forgot about that. And again, with the cute plaid envelope. And then I made this little treat holder. Um, you'll find all of this stuff on my blog. I have um, videos on how I made it and this treat holder with the dimensions and the shopping list and the whole deal. But this just holds those little um, uh, little candy bars like you get at Halloween. But I thought this would make a nice little stocking stuffer or you could put it in your mailbox for your mailman or you could do Secret Santa at work or give it to all your coworkers because it's quick and easy and it's just a pretty little way to say that you appreciate somebody. All right, next, let's see. I don't remember if I showed this to you guys last week. Um, this is was the November promotion, the Snowflake Showcase. Um, and unfortunately, those ended on November 30th. But I did make this pretty card using that in the wood texture background or designer series paper. That's like one of my favorites. And then I had this with the embossing paste where I um, I also colored embossing paste with reinkers, so that you can find on my blog a complete tutorial for this. And then I was in the um, Totally Techniques Global Blog Hop, and um, our technique for the month of was it? yeah November. I'm like, is it November or December? Was um, polished stone. And here are two samples of my polished stone. And can you see that glimmer in there? I think it's showing up way better than in my video that I did. But anyways, um, I used, here's the cards that I made using that technique. And I used the Hold On to Hope and the Crosses of Hope framelits. Aren't these pretty? Sunset in the background with that polished stone technique. And then I have this one. So I am ready for, let's see, oh, sympathy card. That's kind of crappy, right? <laughs> um, that's never fun. But I've got hold on to hope for somebody who may need a card, a little encouragement, something not going so good for them. And then um, here's just kind of a general card that's, you know, not for good things happening, right? So... Anyways, we need those kind of cards too, right? Okay, then last week I forgot to show you guys the cards I got in the mail. So I have to show you. This is from Jean Ewert. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? That's that Dandelion Wishes stamp set. And this is, oh, Jean was um, congratulating me for all my achievements and um, said that she really likes watching my things my Facebook Live and to wish me an awesome Thanksgiving. So thank you so much, Jean. That is just the sweetest. And then I got a card. Oh my gosh, this one is so pretty from Suzette Lewis. Suzette is actually on my team. She was one of my customers 
and she was ordering quite a bit so I said hey Suzette you should buy that starter kit you should be a discount shopper and bam she's a discount shopper and she is loving it and actually um, she had a couple people buy the, the kit from her and so she's already promoted up to silver which is fantastic because she shared the opportunity with other people to be a discount shopper but this is the card that she made for me and isn't that just gorgeous um the fox is not stamping up but she said she couldn't resist and i agree with her i think it's beautiful and um let's see she says happy thanksgiving so yay thank you suzette that is just so pretty and then we have um sally stevens Sally Stevens is um, sent me this card to thank me for she was one of our winners so for the gift that I sent her and that she loves my Facebook live and this is one of the pocket cards so it's kind of funny that I'm showing you this because I'm going to be showing you a couple more tonight um, so that's really pretty thank you Sally and then my friend Denise Denise just went to Arizona, and Denise has been my longtime friend. She's in my stamp club. Um, I absolutely adore her. I met her because of stamping like 17 or 18 years ago, and Denise has actually, her and her husband bought a place in um, Arizona, and she's actually told me that I should come down this winter, so I might do that. Um, so here's, look at this. How beautiful is this? Absolutely gorgeous gorgeous that card is from Denise it was her Christmas card then I have a card from hang on a second Melanie Morris and bless her heart and again she's sending me a card congratulating me on my achievements now look at this isn't that fun yeah very pretty okay thank you Melanie and then I got a card from my wonderful friend, Lori Krause. And Lori is the bomb. She makes the most amazing cards. There's just so many things going on with this, and it is so, so gorgeous. And Lori sent me a card to just say, thank you for being you. How sweet is that? Um, Lori had some computer questions um, last week, and I was available to answer them for her. And I think that, you know, it's just those kind of things. I wouldn't even have thought twice about that, but bam, here comes a beautiful card because I took a few minutes to help out a friend. I love stampers. They're so nice, aren't they? All right, let me set these over here. I think it's time to turn our camera around. I'm picking up my area here so I can get ready for you. I need to be ready for you. I'm gonna turn my camera around and um, we're going to start stamping, I think. How about that? Let me get my little box out of here. Oh my goodness, this is, it's a heavy box. Okay, turning the camera around. If you guys get uh, motion sickness, you want to close your eyes until I tell you to open them. And we're going to pray that nothing happens in the meantime um, to turn this off. So hang tight, close your eyes. I'm coming out. Oops, my thing is stuck in my phone. Here we go. Whew. That was kind of seamless, wasn't it? Let's see, make sure I don't touch it. Now I need to turn my mirroring off. So hang on. And I'm gonna turn my light off because that puts too much glare on the projects. Okay, you guys can open your eyes. I think we're good. Woohoo! That was hard. Okay, we're going to do some fun cards with this. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. You're going, Kelly, what the heck is that? Just hang tight, and I'm going to show you exactly what it is. Let me get out my bits and pieces here. I made these cards for a um, swap. So each month, as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I came up with this idea to have a bundle swap. And that's a swap with other demonstrators using a specific bundle of products. Oh look, I lost this. So I opened up a new one and um, I didn't know what I did with it, but it was in this bin, so that makes sense. <laughs> Anyways, um, so for the, and that's how I get those 
fabulous display boards with all the cards on it. So usually there's about 10 people that participate and each one designs two different cards using the bundle that I choose. And um, for the month of November, we are using the Darling Punch Box. I wrote it on here. Darling Label Punch Box. So this punch box is so cute. It comes in this fantastic tin. And you get a stamp set, a punch, two ink spots, and you even get a block. So this is like a fabulous gift idea. You get a block to put your stamps on, which is very nifty. Two different colors. We've got Night of Navy and Grapefruit Grove. And then... I always have a hard time getting this punch out of here, so just bear with me a minute. We get this cute label punch. So I've got all the images stamped for the um, this kit on here. And you've got a thank you, happy birthday, friend, congratulations, rock star, best wishes, thanks, and hello. And if you look back, um, I think it was sometime in the spring, like... February or March, there's some cards that I made on a Facebook Live using this kit. But as long as I had to design a couple more swap cards, I thought, well, this would be perfect to show this to you for my Facebook Live, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, that's what I thought. I wish you guys could be talking to me because it sure is a lot more fun on my end. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to set these things aside. And I think the first card we're going to make is this one. And I'm going to bring in, oh, and I'm going to show you, let me grab them right now. I'm going to show you the cards that I've gotten so far. All the cards aren't, I mean, I haven't gotten many because the swap was just due like, um, due in the mail on Monday. So I, I don't have all the cards, but I'll show you some more cards using this particular punch box. I always love seeing all the different ideas, right? That's what we love is seeing all those different ideas using the same product. So, let me see. Do I have... Hang on, i got to see if I have any measurements here any place. Nope, I don't. That's great. Okay, I think I'll be able to figure it out. Well, and I've got a ruler, too. So, I chose to use this paper that comes in the... Um, yeah... Good job, Kelly. Um, with the octopus. What is that called? Oh my gosh. I thought I was better prepared. Let me get my catalog so I can tell you. I know right where it is. Tranquil Textures. Whew. That wasn't too bad, you guys. Sorry about that delay. <laughs> Tranquil Textures. And I'm going to tell you... The dimensions here this one is three and five eighths by three four and seven eighths three and five eighths by four and seven eighths then I've got a piece of blueberry bushel which I like to call blueberry buckle remember that baby food called blueberry buckle yeah um, Michael if Michael's watching he knows what I'm talking about he, he was teasing me about it this is three and three quarters by five I've got a piece of Whisper White that I can tell is four by five and a quarter. A piece of Fresh Fig that is five and a half by eight and a half. And by the way, you will find all of these measurements um, above the Facebook Live. So I'm going to put this in the description on my Facebook page above this video. So you'll have them if you want to recreate these. I've got a scrap of the Tranquil Textures paper. And then I've got two pieces. I think these are each three quarters. Yep, three quarters of an inch by four of that designer series paper. Okay, so let's get busy here. Uh, I'm going to bring in one of my piercing mats because I like to stamp on that. Now, oh, and I need a scrap of white. I don't think I, do I, nope, I don't have a scrap of white here. Let's get that out right away. Here's a scrap. I have lots of scraps of white. Don't worry. Oh, I should plug my phone in. I think it's got a full charge. Hang on. I'm going to bump the camera a little bit. There we go. Let me... Okay, we're still good. All right, so I am going to... Oh, 
Oh, do something on the inside. I didn't do anything on the inside. We're going to get this blueberry bushel out right away. And I'm going to use this Congratulations Rockstar. Now, when I saw this stamp, the first thing I thought of was a guitar, right? <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't you? Doesn't everybody think of a guitar when you think rock star? Okay, I'm going to bring in this label punch and punch this out. And then right away, we're going to put some dimensionals on it. So I want to make sure that my dimensionals are on the top and the bottom so that they aren't sticking to my ribbon because sometimes things get floppy when you stick it to the ribbon. You know what I mean? You know, I'll, I'll show you if you don't know what I mean because um, it's really quite annoying. Okay, we are going to... Now, funny thing about this paper, I chose it because I've used all the other or portions of the other sheets in the Tranquil Textures package, but I haven't used this one yet. So I needed to find a reason to use this, and it looks kind of like kind of like alligator skin, graphic alligator skin, I don't know. But I thought, well, that certainly goes with a rock star theme, doesn't it? So that's how my mind works. It's, it's a little crazy, right? But um, that's how it works. Now, here's a great tip. If you guys are making multiple cards, and maybe you're done with your Christmas cards already, but Use this for Valentine's Day or any time you have to make a bunch of cards. I know that I need three pieces of ribbon that are big enough to go across here. And so that would be about five inches. So let's say I was making 10 of these cards and I need three of these for each one. That's 30 pieces of ribbon, right? You're just going to wrap this around there 30 times. And then you're going to bring in your scissors and cut it. Now, I only need three. So I'm going to, I've got this marked, this is two and a half inches, and two and a half on the front and two and a half on the back is five inches. Now this way, it's five inches. So five inches here and five inches there will give you a 10 inch piece of ribbon. This is how I do my ribbon for my classes and swap cards and stuff where I'm making a whole bunch of them. One, two, three. I need three pieces of this fresh fig ribbon. And this is, by the way, the 1 8 inch ribbon. There's my three pieces. Did you see what I did? I was talking. I wasn't really kind of instructing, so hang on. So I wrapped it around here. I started here, wrapped it around three times, and ended here. Then you're just going to cut that, and now I've got three pieces. Or if I was making 10 of these, I would have 30 pieces. Okay, then the reason why I had my tape runner out here is I just took my tape runner and I ran it down the back of my layer. And I'm going to take my ribbon and I'm gonna stick it to that tape runner. And this is just gonna hold it in place. I wanna make sure these are pretty even. Then I'm just gonna grab a piece of tape because this will not if you're a person who sticks your ribbon on your cards like this with just a tape runner, mm, they fall apart. Yeah, they do. Trust me, they do. So I am always putting tape on mine. So now I'm going to take this first one and I'm going to make sure it's straight on the front of my card. And the second one, and put that back there. And the third one, see how easy this is? Oops, I messed it up. There we go. And these are just stuck on there. And now I'm going to put a piece of tape on there to secure them. My cards will not fall apart. Okay, then um, I want to take this scrap and I'm going to stamp my guitar. Oh, where's the guitar coming from? Remember I said guitar, rock star went together? Country living. You've got some cowboy boots, an old truck, and a guitar. And my mind just went right to this guitar when I was figuring out this card, designing this card. So this is one side, this is the back side, and I'm just going to stamp my guitar on here. And then I'm going to bring in my wonderful little paper snips. This is a very easy image to cut out. It looks like, oh my lord, how is she going to cut that out? Don't worry. I'm a professional. 
<laughs> I love saying that. I'm just teasing. You guys know that, right? Um, yeah, I'm not the best cutter in the world, but I do okay. I know my way around a pair of scissors for sure. I actually cut this out ahead of time just in case I mess anything up. You don't have to wait for me to cut it out twice because I've been known to get a little crazy with the scissors. Have you ever stabbed yourself with these puppies? Oh my gosh, those little pointy ends, they will draw blood in a second. Ask me how I know that. I carry Band-Aids with me <laughs> just in case. There's our guitar, pretty simple, right? So I'm gonna bring this in and I am going to put a little bit of glue on the end of my guitar, on this end and this end, and I'm gonna bring it right in here and glue it down, just like that. Pretty easy, right? Here comes that darling label punch, and I'm just going to set that right here. Now you could give this card to a boy or a girl, man or woman, and we're gonna add this to our card front. And I'm, I'm sitting here contemplating, what am I gonna do to that inside piece? Because I didn't do that ahead of time. So, we need to think about this. And I think what I'm gonna do is grab my aqua painter. Is it time to take a drink yet? Oh my gosh. I hope you guys are drinking something good. I still haven't started back on the whole diet thing, so I'm drinking Pepsi. And it is just nectar of the gods. I love it. We went out to eat tonight. Went out for Friday night fish. Um, if you're from Wisconsin, that is a perfectly normal thing. Um, if you're not from Wisconsin, on Friday nights, we go out for fish. <laughs> it's a thing. It's a, Everybody has a fish fry on Friday nights. And um, sometimes people think it's kind of funny that everybody doesn't know that. But it's really kind of a Midwest thing for the most part. So we went to Lake Park Pub for fish. They have really good fish. And that's um, outside of Appleton. And so I'm really, really thirsty because, of course, it was... Very salty. You know how that goes, right? Okay, so I've got these two pieces of the designer series paper that are three quarters of an inch wide by four inches long, and I'm just going to put those on here. Now, these are pretty decoration, but it also serves another purpose. So if you don't like to write a lot in your cards, this takes up some space. <laughs> right? So, bam! <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. I know, sometimes I feel like writing lots of stuff, and other times it's like, yeah, happy birthday, Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, and then I was wondering if I should put those cowboy boots in here. What do you guys think? I think I'm going to do that. We'll see. I might totally wreck this card. Let me get it black out here. Um, but I was thinking some blueberry bushel cowboy boots. Oh, that's super cute, isn't it? Now. Let's see if I do this, what happens. Now I've got my aqua painter. I'm just getting some water out of it. I don't want too much water on here. And I'm just gonna come in here. Because my ink is not waterproof, I didn't even add any ink to this, right? I didn't add any ink to my aqua painter. I just stamped my image and now I'm making that ink bleed just a little bit. I think I like this. Sometimes things work on the fly. Lots of times they don't, so. But I think this is working. What do you guys think? It's pretty cool looking, isn't it? Okay, that was a good idea. I hope the rest of the night goes this well. You know how sometimes things don't go so good. But you guys are all so wonderful. And, uh, and understanding. Ah, I love it. Look at that. Congratulations, rock star. There we go. That turned out super. I love it. Okay, next card. I'm also using the um, punch box. And with this one, we are going to use, hang on. We're going to use Call Me Clover ink. And I've got a whole bunch of things going on here. So, oh, lots of layers. Let me see if I can even remember what I'm supposed to do with all these layers. Now, I've got white. Um, I'm assuming that's a scrap <laughs> of pool party. 
Got some designer series paper here. Okay, here's an inside and a back. Okay, now I see what I'm doing. All right, all right, okay. I didn't actually make a couple of these cards, so I wasn't sure what I was doing. All right, so this is a scrap. These, I think, are also just little scraps. Yeah, they are. And this is a scrap. So here's what I'm going to do. Hmm, let me think about this for a second. Um... I am going to get my white scrap back out here and we're going to stamp this happy birthday friend on the white and then I think maybe I'm going to try to stamp it on here. Yeah, why not? I think this will work. I'm going to cut this birthday part out of here. So I stamped it on soft suede with the uh, Call Me Clover ink. And I'm just going to cut that out. Then I'm going to glue that. We're going to see how this works. This may not work at all. I'm going to glue this right over top of this one. Oh, I like that. I think I do like that. Then I've got a circle punch. Where did that go? I, oh, I'm using it on the next card too. So. Oh, I've got a moving card to show you after I do these next two, so I think you're going to love that. Here comes my one-inch circle punch. So see, I didn't even use the label punch for my image, but I certainly could have. And then I think we are going to use that label punch. Here it is. And we're going to punch this out. Yep. I think that's what we're gonna do. Here comes, I need dimensionals, where'd they go? Does that, oh, here they are. I was gonna say, has anybody seen my dimensionals? We're gonna put a dimensional right there. And we're gonna put this right in the middle. And how stinking cute is that? So not only does the stamp work with um, the label punch, but it also works with a one inch circle punch. So that's cool. Okay, now for the rest of the card. I've got this little piece, and this is uh, three quarters by three and a half. And then my white layer is three and a half by four and three quarters. I'm just going to add this. Now this is that animal outing paper again. And you guys saw me make these little pocket cards um, a few weeks ago, I did a bunch of them. I did some Christmas ones. What else? I used the Share What You Love paper. And that's what I've been sending out for thank you cards is the Share What You Love. You'll get, you'll get one of these pocket cards when you place an order with me. Now, the Designer Series paper. This is a four by ten and a half. And you're just going to take it. And again, this is the Animal Outing. You're going to take it and fold it in half, and then you're just going to take and fold this back. There's no rhyme or reason. You don't have to measure that part. That's what you're going to do with it. Okay, next, I need Baker's Twine. So any type of um, smaller ribbon will work for this, but I really like Baker's Twine for it. So I'm going to do... One, two, oops, I got caught on my punch. Hang on. Malfunction. Two, three. All right, I'll cut that off down there. I cleaned my scissors today, and oh my gosh, they are working so much better. Like, it seemed like they were totally dull, but I knew it was just because they were really sticky, right? So that was pretty exciting. Anytime I use... Baker's Twine, I tie it in a knot. Then it'll stay nice and tight and I don't have to worry about that. And then I tie my bow. So we're gonna get this little bow tied here, yay! And I'm gonna make sure that I hold on to my loops when I'm fussing with my bow. Cause I don't like it when it curls up. These loops will curl up if you don't hold on to them while you're pulling your tails. Loops and tails, loops and tails. Okay, I am going to 
add a good amount of glue here because I don't want this to fall apart. So on the top and the bottom, it's going to go above and below the baker's twine. Maybe. And maybe I'm just dreaming that that's really going to work. So hang on. We got that dimensional under our circle. Is that going to stay? I think it is. I put enough glue in there that it should stay. Here comes our little insert that you can stamp whatever you need. If you want to stamp a greeting on there, you certainly can. And then you're going to add glue to this. What? Hang on. I just got glue all over my finger. Well, it wouldn't really be much of a session without pulling out a wipe, would it? <laughs> I think my glue is empty, you guys. Hang on. I'm going to dump this bottle. Let's try this one. I have my handy dandy little pin that I keep stuck in the plastic thing on the side of my bottle so that it's always there for me. Oh yeah, this one's gonna work much better. My goodness. Then you've got this crumb cake piece. Now this is just a quarter sheet of cardstock, four and a quarter by five and a half. We're gonna put this on there and isn't this just adorable? Look at that sloth right there. We've got that lizard and the giraffe. Isn't that just the sweetest card? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, hang on. We've got another one to make. And this one's just a little bit different color combination. I'm gonna bring in this white piece. It's the same as the last. It's three and three quarters by four and three quarters. And I'm gonna put this little piece down here. Oops. This is how my scissors get all sticky because I have glue on there. Yep, see? <laughs> okay. And then I've got a piece of pool party that is, let's see, four and seven eighths by three and seven eighths, I believe. Or, let me measure that. I don't want to give you the wrong thing. It, it's actually five by four, right? five by three and three quarters. So this is the whites three and a half, the pool party's three and three quarters. Okay. And then we've got this super cute paper, and this is actually um, kind of the same pattern. It's just smaller, but I thought this would make a really cute card, and it's got orange on the back, so a little bit different. Again, ten and a half by four. We're just going to fold it in half, give it a good burnish here, fold this back. Okay. And we are going to wrap that with the baker's twine. One, two, three. I had several people tell me that they have their Christmas cards done and they're tired of Christmas cards. How many of you are tired of Christmas cards? That's why I'm kind of showing you some different ideas. If you've got your Christmas cards done, yes, I have some other Christmas cards I could show you, and I'm still making Christmas cards, and I love Christmas, and oh, I love Christmas. But um, I was kind of happy to move on to something else for tonight, too. So I'm kind of, I'm right there with you. Okay, here goes our little layer for the inside, our pocket. Here comes this piece. And again, this is four and a quarter by five and a half pool party. And we're gonna put this down here. There we go. And then what I wanted to do with this one is, here's where this pool party comes in. We're gonna kinda do the same thing. We're gonna punch out the label punch. And then we're going to stamp our happy birthday. And this time we're just gonna punch it out with the circle. We're not gonna cut out an extra piece. Oops, that wasn't very straight. There we go. This time I'm just gonna glue this piece on there and add dimensionals to the back of this label. That's a little crooked and that's gonna drive me crazy. And now it's crooked the other way. <laughs> there we go. 
Some days, right? Some days are better than others. Ah. Okay. There we go. And we've got another... <laughs> Did you see that thing go flying? Another super, super cute little birthday card. Sweet! Want to see the other one I made? I used the alligators, you guys. Isn't that cute? Very fun. These are just a lot of fun, and they're so simple to make. And you don't have to write that much. <laughs> you could stamp a greeting in here, a birthday greeting, and just say, Billy. And then it'll say, wishing you the best birthday. Love, Auntie Kelly. Yeah, so that's fun. Okay, so... Darling Label Punch Box, super cool, great tin. Um, let me show you the other cards. I've only got four of them in the mail so far, but I think I gotta take these out of the envelopes because they are so pretty. Look at this, isn't that gorgeous? This is our designer series paper. I can't remember what it's called, but, um, oh, I've got it right here, let me see. Is it called the tea room paper? Da, 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 da. Of course, it's not going to be on the page that's opened. Tea room. I was right. Tea room specialty paper, you guys. So, so pretty. And um, the edges of this one are sponged. Okay. Here's the next one. I this is cute. Look at that. This is our Twinkle Twinkle paper. I know the name of that. And that ombre ribbon. That's really pretty. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Here's the next one. I should be receiving more of these in the mail this week. But different colors of ribbon with that nice flourish and the thinking of you. So that's really cute. And then we've got the rock star. Congratulations, rock star, with this girl that's like going, yay! Look at this one. Wake up, kick butt, repeat. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, I really like this punch box. I like this label punch. Um, if you're thinking about a gift for somebody, this makes a fabulous gift for a beginner stamper or even an advanced stamper. But I say beginner because it's got the block in it. So it's got everything except scissors and cardstock and adhesive. This is a win-win. All right, let me move these off to the side because I have, ooh, I gotta get this cleaned up too. Take a drink, take a little mental break before we move on to the next thing. Uh, let me find my basket here so I can get this stuff off my desk. I've got a moving card for you. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. This card, um, I actually created it for the Color Fusers blog hop, and that blog hop is going to go live tomorrow on Monday. And um, we were challenged to use, it's Color Fusers, so it's a color challenge, and we were challenged to use uh, specific colors. So we had to use Cherry Cobbler and um, Shaded Spruce, and Mint Macaron. Oh, I'm gonna need that circle punch. Mint Macaron, and Gold Foil Paper. So how's that for a cool challenge? Let me grab my pen. You guys are gonna love this, because I love this. So I'm gonna bring in my colors of cardstock. Now, one of the things we can do with the Color Fusers Challenge is we can use neutral colors. So black, white, very vanilla, crumb cake. And that's what that's what I have here is a piece of crumb cake. So we can use neutral colors. So that's cool. And I have some Stampin' Blend alcohol markers here, some linen thread. I'm using the Buffalo Check Background, and I haven't really used this with you guys yet, so I'm excited to show you what I did. Oh, and then, before I forget, we've got the Spirited Snowman stamp set. This is such a fun, cute little stamp set. And, um, 
gosh, I can't really show you the card. Well, maybe I'll show you the card that I have for my, I'll show you the other card where I use this for an anniversary card because these hugging snowmen are so cute. I thought anniversary, perfect. The Buffalo check. These are both in the holiday mini catalog. And then I use the greeting from perfect picture, perfect birthday. And this is in the annual catalog. Okay, so let me set those aside. I'm gonna bring in my stamps here. I have my cherry cobbler. Ooh, I need mint macaron too. Hang on. Here we go. Um, okay, so I know that I have dimensions. Yes, I do. I was pretty smart about this one. <laughs> I hate being caught off guard not knowing the dimensions. Okay, so we have a piece of cherry cobbler, standard size, four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I've got a piece of crumb cake here that is three and five eighths by five and an eighth. I have a scrap of our Whisper White thick cardstock, and this is kind of important. Then I've got a piece of regular Whisper White that's three and three quarters by five. Uh, let's see, another piece that, oh, these are both the same, that's funny. Um, oh yeah, because these are for my greeting. A piece of crumb cake that is three quarters by three and a quarter. And then I've got, we only need one of these, but if I mess it up, I've got a spare. <laughs> um, we've got, this one is three quarters by three and a quarter, Whisper White. And I think, oh, and my gold. And my gold is about, mm, where'd my gold go? Um, oh, seven eighths by three. Okay, let's do this. Now, I'm gonna bring in the Buffalo Check background and my cherry cobbler. Guys, I'm so thirsty. Because of course, Friday night fish fry with french fries is really salty. All right, cherry cobbler ink, and we're gonna ink up this background stamp. Now, the, I'll share the card with you guys if you don't tell anybody. <laughs> because this isn't actually gonna appear on my blog, the other card that I made until Monday. So that won't be in with the projects I'm making tonight, right? Okay, so I'll share it to you when I get done showing you this one. Now, anytime you have a big background stamp like this, you wanna leave it lay on the table. You do not put this on a block. I mean, you can put it on a block, but you don't put it on a block and then stamp with it. That doesn't work. It's a disaster. I have never had that go well for me. And I want stamping to go well. So you leave it on the table and you bring your layer of cardstock to your stamp. Then you're gonna have a piece of paper and you're gonna take that piece of paper and you're gonna rub a nice flat hand over this whole thing and give it some good pressure. And then, voila! Here is our buffalo check. Isn't that pretty? Now, I know because my name is Kelly Atchison that I probably have a little red ink on my hands. There is something, look at, I did. There is something about red ink that I always get it on my fingers. And it's a funny thing because my stampers at my classes say the same thing. It's like, what is it about red ink that you always get it on your fingers? So I'm glad I washed that off before I wreck anything. All right, now with this, we are going to take our ruler and we are going to add some plaid lines to this background. And I'm just going to do that. Now here's a tip while you're doing this. You can add any colors you want. You can make this so pretty with all different colors. You want to start before your cardstock and end afterwards. Because you see how that's not the best line starting out? If I were to start out right on my cardstock and do that, it doesn't look so great. So you're going to start over here and go beyond. Is, does that make sense? That's what I'm trying to say to you. I just wasn't saying it very well. And I know you guys are going to find this hilarious. <laughs> but... um. Most people would be kind of comatose by now. Um, <laughs> it's actually 1.30 in the morning. 
<laughs> on Saturday night when I'm doing this. So I just thought I'd share that with you because it's kind of funny. You guys are probably going, oh my lord, what is she doing? This is my normal time. I mean, I am in good shape this time of night. I love this time of night. And I think it's probably the caffeine that really keeps me going. But, um, yeah, it's 1.30 in the morning. And, and I'm doing a Facebook Live. And I wish I could actually do my Facebook Live at 1.30 in the morning. I just got that one crooked, you guys. So maybe I should stop. Maybe it's because it's 1.30 in the morning. It's really not. I just wasn't paying attention. But, um... Yeah, I'm a late night person. Like, I oftentimes don't go to bed till 3. So, yeah, there you have it. So, how cute is that? So, I've fulfilled two of my colors so far. Mint Macron and Cherry Cobbler for my Monday Color Fusers blog hop. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to stamp our greeting on here. And I've got that cute little winter cheer that comes with the... Um, snowmen, the, what's this called? Spirited Snowmen. I forgot the name. That'll happen sometimes. And I'm going to stand up. I want to make sure that this is on my block straight. And it looks like it's a little bitty crooked. I'm going to do this. Oh, very good. <laughs> that makes me happy. And then we're going to flag that end. So we're going to get out these nice, clean little, I'm going to make this, well, maybe not. Clean little paper snips and I'm gonna flag and flag. I like to do it this way. I like to cut that in the middle and then come in from the sides. Well look there's the glue. Well we knew it was there didn't we? All right so I've got that. Now I'm gonna add some glue to the back. Is this? No this is the good bottle. I'm like is this the bottle I was supposed to throw away? I think I did actually throw that in the garbage. Okay so we're gonna add this to the foil paper. And this foil paper is way longer than I need it to be. But we're going to trim it off, so don't panic on me. <laughs> Remain calm. <laughs> okay, I'm actually probably funner this time of night. Because you know how you get a little punchy <laughs> when you've had a long day? And I have had a pretty long day. I've had a great day. I went out and ran some errands. I bought some, I don't know, I bought a few clothing things. We'll see if they fit. I didn't try them on. I hate trying stuff on at the store, don't you? Ugh. Oh, let's cut this off. Okay, so we got our plaid done. Now, one of the things we need to do... Oh, we need to score this. So, I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer. And we are going to score this at... Hang with me here. Half an inch and four and a quarter. So on, on the long side, I'm going to put this in a half an inch. And if you guys don't have a paper trimmer, this is the bomb. It's got a scoring blade and a cutting blade. You can push them all the way out of the way for your, um, is this actually just 12 inches? Yeah. Is this 12 inches? Yeah. 12 inches. You can fit 12 inch paper in here and push both the blades out of the way for whatever you need to do. This is a fabulous little paper cutter. I love it because I score a lot because we love fun folds, right? So that was a half an inch and then we're going to go to... Oh, that doesn't seem right. Hang on a second. I got to think about this. Oh, that looks right. And then four and a quarter. Does that look right? Nope, I did it wrong. Hang on. See, I knew I should have I should have stuck with my gut feeling there. I know what I did wrong. Okay. Let's cut a new piece. I'll use that for something else. Punching or something. Okay, so half a piece of cardstock. We're gonna cut it at a half an inch. And then, this needed to be actually, uh, this is the old one. Oh yeah, that was right, okay. That's not right, how come that's not right? Hang with me here for a second. I think it needs to be scored at four and a half. Four and a quarter, oh, four and three quarters. No, that's not right. Okay, hang on. Kelly, 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 get it together here. I should've wrote this down. 
four and a half. There you go. Boom. Let me change that on my little note so I don't mess it up when I put it on um, the Facebook in the description. So I don't want to give you guys the wrong dimensions. Somebody, by the way, emailed me the other day and said, hey, you've got a dimension wrong on something from your Facebook Live. And sure enough, I did. I typed it wrong. So I went in and changed it on my blog right away. I do not want to be giving you bad information because we don't need that frustration. Half an inch, four and a half. And now we're going to burnish these edges. Just like this, so it's gonna you know fold in like that, and then we are going to place our I almost said chrome paper, I don't even know where that came from. We're gonna place our plaid adorable paper. Oh, you know what? I need I'm gonna put some glue in the middle here too because I want this to stick down pretty good. We're gonna put that. Oh, 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 no, that's right. I forgot to put the punch in it, but now I'm going to do the punch because I always forget. If you're going to have a tab with something, I always forget that tab punch. So now you're going to bring your one inch circle in here and you're going to do mm, just a little bit less than half um, in the circle and punch through both layers. And so we have that, okay? Now I'm gonna bring in some tear and tape. I love this stuff. Tear and tape is your friend. So I'm gonna put this right down here. Okay, and I put my tear and tape close to that score line. Because that's where you need it to kind of hold. Oh look, I went just a little bit beyond and that will not work. Let's trim that off a little bit. Hang on, let me get rid of it. There we go. Is that the place to do that? Probably not. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> that was my little that was my little layer that we're going to put on the front. Okay. So we've got this part done. Now, this is the inside of our card and we're going to leave that for just a minute. Um now we're going to stamp our snowman. And I'm using Memento ink for that. And here he comes. He is so sweet and cute. He just makes me smile every time I look at him. Okay. And we'll get that closed up. Now we're gonna do a little some little little work with the markers. Um I've got my cherry cobbler. This is the cherry cobbler light. And I should probably put my glasses on for this because this is kind of some little tiny work. We'll see how I do without them. And then these little herringbone things in his scarf are, this is just so cute. And da da da. Okay, and a little bit more here. And here, and maybe a little dot there. Okay, so I think that's it with the red. Then I'm gonna come in with the um, shaded spruce light. And I have to use that because that's part of the color challenge, right? So I'm fulfilling all my colors here. Now, you guys are gonna have to keep a secret for me because we're not really allowed to use other colors besides what they give us and the neutrals that I told you about. We're not allowed, but I could not leave my snowman naked with a uncolored nose. So that's why I have pumpkin pie, but let's keep that one under our hats. We're not gonna tell anybody. Hopefully nobody will notice. <laughs> okay, then. This little bugger is really quite easy to cut out. And no, we don't have framelits for it. Remember back when we had to fussy cut everything? Well, we're fussy cutting tonight. Just a little bit. I'm gonna make this more manageable. There we go. So this little guy is pretty easy to cut out. I like to kind of stay, I don't know, like a 16th of an inch away from my image when I'm cutting stuff like this out. 
it just leaves you some leeway in case you get a little, you know, you make a mistake or something, you can kind of fix it. Whoops, that's a little too far away. There we go, like that. Just like that little mistake that I made. Boy, that was convenient, wasn't it? Let's hope that's the only one. So everybody thinks when you cut stuff out, you gotta really cut close to things, and that's when stuff starts looking pretty crummy. So don't get too close. You'll notice that your dies don't cut right up to the edge of stuff either. So, and, and that stuff looks fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah, as long as you get it on there and keep it on there straight. And then when you come to these little um, ice skates, just like that, no big deal. It's a good thing. Make up a bunch of these, stamp up a bunch of them, and sit in front of the TV and cut them out. I'm going to trim the skate just a little, little bit. There we go. All right, here we go. <laughs> Isn't he just the cutest little thing? Okay, so um, here's what we're gonna do. Before you glue this part together, we need to do a little bit of cutting. And, oh great, my computer wants to update. I think not right now. <laughs> I'm looking for my little cutting edge, so just hang on. One and three quarters, okay. All right, we are going to, let me measure this one quick, sorry. Um, this is the one part I forgot to write down. So it's actually one and a half. All right, we're gonna put this in here up to, ooh, I think one and three quarters of an inch. So we've got a half an inch here. Hang on, this is gonna be worth your weight. Half an inch here. And then, yeah, one and three quarters. Okay. Put your piece in. This is our tab. We're gonna put it into one and three quarters of an inch. We're gonna lift up our arm and we're gonna place our blade down at one inch. So I'm gonna stand up here and put that in at one inch. And we're going to go down to four and a half inches. And then back. You just want to make sure it's cutting through both layers. So now we have a slit. See that? Slit. Yep. Okay. Get that out of the way. Then we need our dimensionals. Where did they go? Oop, here they are. And this little arm. Now remember, this piece was three quarters wide by three and a quarter long. And we're gonna put a dimensional right on the end here. And then we're going to slide it into the slit and slide it all the way over to the left-hand side. So it's gonna sit there just like this. Okay. Now we need that tear and tape again. You wanna make sure this is really nice and secure. So I'm going to put a piece of tear and tape right here and another piece of tear and type tape right here. Okay, so I've got those. You wanna push it down good so it's gonna stick. And then I'm bringing in my take your pick tool. If you guys don't have one of these yet, next time you place an order, you wanna get one because it's pretty cool. It's a pretty nifty little tool. And this is what I use to do a whole bunch of stuff, but it works really good to get this backing off of this tear and tape. So that's pretty cool. All right. Now, that white piece that's right here, this piece is going to go... Now, you want to line this up with your, whole, with your um, circle cut out up here, and then you want to center it. So I'm lining it up with the edge and I am centering it and I'm pushing it down. So now it's stuck to that little piece that's under there. See that? Yeah. Stuck to that. Okay, watch this. <laughs> this is so fun. Now we are going to take our snowman. We're going to peel the backing off of our dimensional. We are going to put our little snowman in here. Now you want to make sure that his skate does not go beyond the bottom of your card, which is going to be right here. So here comes his little skate, just like that. <laughs> 
And then this winter cheer is going to tuck in behind him. Now, I think I need to trim this just a little bit more. So you just tuck it in there and get it to feel comfortable for whatever you're doing with this card idea. So here comes a dimensional. Hang on, I'm just going to push that in there. Here comes, get back up here. And now I'm going to kind of lift my little snowman up. And I just wanted a greeting on my snowman, so this is what I came up with. I'm gonna put him right there, okay? Now, we're gonna take a pencil, and we're gonna make a slit right here, or a slit, a little dot. Oh, that doesn't look very centered. Let me try that again. Kind of hard from the angle that I'm at. There we go. And we're gonna take this, and we're gonna punch this out. Oh shoot, you know what I forgot to do? Oh, oh no, I'm still in good shape. I wanna add some linen thread. So on the sample that I made, I already had my whole card stuck together and I didn't do this yet. So I was feeding this linen thread in through the tube and it was just like, oh, for Pete's sakes, Kelly. <laughs> Why do you make things so difficult? So I am going to take, oops, I don't need to be that long. Take some linen thread here. And I'm gonna wrap this around my card three times. I'm just wrapping it in there three times. One, two, three. And I love the crumb cake and the linen thread color, which is pretty much crumb cake too, right? Um, it just gives it kind of that old country charm, the, the crumb cake with the cherry cobbler. All right, you know what, that's not long enough. I don't want to settle on this card, so just hang on, because I need to make that longer. Oh my lord. See, this is the part of my video I would cut out if we were not live. <laughs> you would never have seen this little linen thread debacle. debacle. Okay, there we go. One, two, three. Okay. There we go. All right. And like I said, with linen thread, I always like to, or um, Baker's Twine, tie your knot so you're not trying to keep this tight while you're trying to tie a bow. We got enough problems in life, right? <laughs> Let's not add to our frustration. All right, here we go. Oh, I didn't show you guys my fingernails either. Maybe you saw them already, or maybe you're going, what the heck is wrong with her fingernails? Because if you don't know what's going on with them, you might not know. Check that out. This is a little Santa Claus hat. Can you see that? Is the light okay? Yeah, I've got little Santa Clauses on my fingers because I'm feeling very Christmassy and festive. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now we can... Hang on a second. Now we can get our card together and then I can show you this whole deal. Oh, I know, I need some linen thread in that hole that I poked too. So what I did with that is I took my hand and I just wrapped some linen thread around it like three or four times. It's getting kind of short on me, hang on. Uh, maybe only three times. That's good, because that's gonna give us six strands. That'll be perfect. Okay, so I just got six strands, wrapped it around my hand. I'm just gonna make this a little pointy deal and put it through this hole, maybe. It worked earlier today, but right now it's gonna give me a hard time because you guys are watching me. Oh, maybe I got it. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then we are going to Pull that back through the loop. Nope, we gotta pull it through this loop. I'm gonna find my loop. I'm so glad you guys are patient with me. I try to do this stuff as quickly as possible without messing things up and making a mess out of them. Oh, isn't that cute? Okay, now be careful, because this is just regular cardstock. You don't wanna pull this too, too hard, but I do wanna get all the strings even. There we go. And now I'm just going to do that. <laughs> and 
now we're ready to peel this off. Isn't this so exciting? It's like the unveiling of a gift or something. And you just fold that down. Okay, are you ready? Look how cute that is. And then, voila! Yeah, so Kelly, what are we gonna do at the inside? Let me show you. This is gonna be super cute. Okay, we are going to take the happiest of birthdays to you because I designed this as a winter birthday card. I know you guys said you were getting tired of Christmas, so that's fine. We don't have to make Christmas with all these things that you think you have to make Christmas with. You can make winter um, winter cards. We need winter cards. We have winter birthdays. We have winter anniversaries. <gasps> Look at how cute that is. Oh, my gosh. Now, I got this idea from my fellow demonstrator, Lisa Curcio, and she got it from her downline. Um, and both of our cards are a little bit different than the original, so that's kind of cool. Sweet! Who doesn't love to play with these moving cards? But I just think this is so precious. All right, now I am going to show you. Oh, see, I just stuck my finger in the red again. <laughs> I'm going to show you the other card that I made. As long as you promise not to tell anybody that I showed it to you before it went live on my blog. Let me just get some of this mess cleaned up here. I'll save this piece and use it for punching and whatever. I want to get all this trashy stuff out of here. Okay. Here we go. This is the other card I made with this set. What do you guys think I used? Should I tell you? I think I should. I use Mint Macron for that buffalo check, and then I use Cherry Cobbler for the stripes, so it's kind of opposite. I've got that gold foil paper in here that was requ required for this. I used some of the Tea Room Combo Ribbon in um, Shaded Spruce. That was another color that was required. And this says, Love Never Melts. And then when you open it up, wishing you a day of love and happy memories, happy anniversary, because I thought these little lovebirds were great for an anniversary. So I'm going to put this back over here because that's for Monday. <laughs> and this will be on Monday too, but I'm showing you how to make it here because I didn't show the Monday people how to make it. But let's just play with it one more time. <laughs> I love it. All right, so we've got that. We've got our pocket cards using the um, Darling Label Punch Box and the Animal Outing Designer Series Paper. Here's our Rockstar card using the Tranquil Textures Designer Series Paper in the Country Living Stamp Set. And I think that concludes my show for the evening. You guys, make sure to go back to Facebook and click on um, that like button, share my video, share it on YouTube. If you're placing an order, you can use this host code. If your order's under $150, if it's over $150, don't use the host code because you'll get your own benefits. Either way, um, if your order's under $150 and you use the host code, you're gonna get special perks from me. If your order's over $150, don't use the host code, you're still gonna get special perks from me. This is my blog, www.estampabump.com. And um, I don't know if I can put a link in on YouTube from a Facebook Live, but just in case I can, click up there. <laughs> if a link appears, you can click on it and that'll take you right to my blog. You wanna also click down here in the bottom right-hand corner to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out. I'm super excited because the other day I hit 11,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I'm just such an awe and so very, very grateful for the opportunity to stamp with you and teach you new ideas and share in this fabulous paper crafting deal. Um, like I said before, this is the best job I've ever had in my life. And I work with the best people, meaning you guys, because you're so encouraging and always there rooting me on. And, and I, I, I just so appreciate that. So thank you so much. Remember, I have orders going in every Thursday. 
Um, you can you can call me if you're not comfortable ordering online. You can give me a call and I'll put an order in for you. It's it's not a big deal. I'm happy to help you out. And I did have several people take advantage of that last week, so that was sweet. I want to thank you guys that did place orders with me last week. Um, I had just like a fantastic week, so I really really appreciate that, especially with the holidays coming up. Yay! All right, you guys, I will be back on December 9th at 7 p.m. live, not not live, but live, and um, I hope you enjoyed this program, and thank you for telling me that you did want me to do a Facebook Live not live because I have fun with this. It's a lot funner when you guys are here, but, you know, making the most of it, too. Have yourselves a fabulous week. Bye-bye.